the Health, Hospitals, and so Social Services Committee meeting on Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. Um, we will start this meeting with a motion for electronic me meetings pursuant to Governor Lee's executive order number 71 regarding electronic meetings. I make a motion that this committee meeting agenda constitutes essential business of the Metropolitan Council and that the meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans in light of COVID-19 outbreak. Second. Perfect, thank you. And we'll also take roll uh, for this as well. Uh, Council Member Hurt. Aye. Council Member Benedict. Aye. Council Member Glover. Aye. Council Member Hall. Aye. Council Member Porterfield. Aye. Council Member Pulley. Aye. Vice Chair Welsh. Aye. Council Member Hauser. Aye. And I vote with the affirmative as well. All right, thank you. <clears throat> so I'm gonna move through this. Uh, I, I wanna move through this uh, agenda uh, and when we finish, we have a, a brief visitor um, and Mr. Uh, or Dr. Excuse me, Dr. Gil Wright uh, to uh, communicate with this committee in regards to uh, the vaccine rollout and protocol. Um, and so uh, I ask for your time uh, at the end of this meeting uh, uh, for us to welcome Dr. Uh, Dr. Wright and for any questions uh, that you may have. All right, resolution RS 2020 21 or RS 2021 704 Baltimore Taylor Hurt and Swar appropriates grant funds from the cities for financial empowerment fund incorporated to the Metro Action Commission to support a summer jobs connect program to provide banking access and financial empowerment training to participants. And we have a letter from the sponsor. So we have a motion. So move. Second. It's been moved improperly. Second. Uh, do we have any discussion? Ms. McCready, would you like to uh, offer uh, this? Any information on this? Thank you for the opportunity. I would like to defer to Ellen Zinkowitz, who's on the line, um, who has direct connection to the program for our agency. Ms. Zinkowitz. Yes, thank you. Um, the Summer Jobs Connect program through the Cities for Financial Empowerment is a nationwide effort to link financial literacy and banking access initiatives to summer youth employment programs. Um, this is the first year the um, Opportunity Now programs have been um, housed with the Metropolitan Action Commission. And so we are excited about the opportunity to provide this financial literacy and banking access with through those summer programs to the larger MAC service population. Thank you, Ms. Inquits. Uh, do we have any further discussion, committee members? Seeing no hands in the queue, uh, I'd like to um, put this up for a vote. Uh, Council Member Hurt. Aye. Council Member Benedict. Aye. Council Member Glover. Aye. Council Member Hall. Aye. Council Member Porterfield. Aye. Council Member Pulley. Aye. Council Member Welsh. Aye. Council Member Hauser. Did you say, did you say Hauser? Yes, ma'am. Yes, aye. Good deal. And I vote aye as well. Uh, motion passes nine in favor, zero against, no abstentions. RS 2021 705 by Toombs, Taylor, Hurt, Swart, and Siles approves Amendment 2 to a grant to appropriate from the Tennessee Department of Human Services to the Metro Action Commission for community services block grant to provide a range of services designed to assist low income and homeless individuals achieve self-sufficiency. Uh, do we have a motion? Move. Second. And moved and properly seconded. 
Uh, do we have any discussion? Seeing no hands in the queue. Uh, Ms. Tackett, do you? Ms. Tackett, would you like to give us a, a quick? Actually, uh, Councilman Taylor, this is that's a grant through the Metropolitan Action Commission, I okay. believe. Thank you. Yeah, and Marvin Cox is on the line for that one. Good evening. Uh, these funds would help us to assist individuals and families in Davidson County with one-time assistance for family well-being, such as a rent, mortgage, uh, individuals that might come in for deposits as well. Thank you, Mr. Cox. And we'll do a roll call vote uh, for this as well. Council member Hurt. Yes, and I just want to thank the Metro Action Commission because I know I've sent several people over there and they have done an outstanding job in meeting the needs of those people in the community. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Hurt. Thank you so much. Council Member Benedict. Aye. Council Member Glover. Aye. Council Member Hall. Aye. Council Member Porterfield. Aye. Council Member Pulley. Aye. And also, it's always good to hear from Mr. Cox. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pulley. Council Thank Member Rush. Uh, aye. Council Member Hauser. Aye. And I. Um, uh, nine in favor, zero against. Thank you. RS 2021-706 uh, by Taylor approves a contract between the Metro Board of Health and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to facilitate enrollment in qualified health plan options and insurance uh, affordability programs as a certified application uh, counselor designated organization. Uh, do we have a motion? Move. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Do we have any discussion? All right, Mr. Sharp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, that is a contract that allows us to do Affordable Care Act enrollment in this building, either with our staff or volunteers. We have, since the uh, act went in effect in 14 or 15, we've had a volunteer here pretty much continuously during that period, except for the last few months. Um, and we'll resume that as soon as we can start using our building for something other than the plague. Uh, and then we have three staff members who uh, do similar type things. Most of their enrollment is presumptive eligibility enrollment for 10 years. And that contract just uh, gives CMS's blessing, basically. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Do we have any questions for Mr. Sharp? Seeing no one in the queue, um, we'll do our roll call vote. Councilmember Hurt. Aye. Mr. Benedict. Aye. Councilmember Glover. Aye. Councilmember Hall. Aye. Councilmember Porterfield. Aye. Councilmember Pulley. Aye. Councilmember Welsh. Aye. Councilmember Hauser. Aye. Aye. Uh, moving on to RS 2021 707. Uh, by Toombs, Taylor, and others, approves a memorandum of agreement between the Metropolitan De Development, uh, the MDHA, and the Metro Social Services Commission to utilize funds to provide essential staffing and equipment to expand the homelessness management information systems. I'd like to move that. Do we have a second? Move. Second. Perfect. It's been moved and properly seconded. Um, and there is... A, a letter for approval uh, from Councilmember Toombs. Uh, do we have any discussion? Seeing no discussion in the queue, uh, Ms. Tackett, could you, uh, we briefly spoke about this, could you share um, a, a bit more? Yes, 
This is a $395,000 grant for about the next 18 months. It will allow us to hire a much needed HMS position. That's the Homeless Management Information System database uh, position and also a second um, staff position to help search for landlords. I wanted to share this is all connected to the $10 million grant that uh, MBHA administers and has is going out to nonprofits um, for most of that money is going to be used for housing. The goal is to house um, up to 400 or 400 more, uh, plus people uh, by December of this year. Um, I have a really great news to share. Uh, as of now, since October 1st, 138 of those uh, towards those goals have been moved to housing. Um, uh, that That's um, really a huge, huge um, for our community to move that many people in such a short time, especially towards the end of the year with Christmas and everything. So a lot of uh, people have already been moved to housing. We need um, these positions at the Homeless Impact Division to help us with the coordination and support the community in this continued ed effort. Thank you, Ms. Tackett. Do we have any, any questions from the committee? Seeing none, uh, we'll go to our roll call vote. Councilmember Hurt. Aye. Councilmember Benedict. Aye. Councilmember Glover. Aye. Councilmember Hall. Aye. Councilmember Porterfield. Aye. Councilmember Pulley. Aye. Councilmember Welsh. Aye. Councilmember Hauser. Aye. And I follow the affirmative as well. Nine in favor, zero against. RS 2021-708 by Tombs and others accepts a coronavirus aid, relief, and economic security cares act grant from the Greater National Regional Council to the Metro Social Services Commission to provide meals that meet RDA nutritional guidelines to eligible seniors. And also, uh, I'd like to take 709 um, uh, as well. Um, approves Amendment 1 to the, corona the CARES Act grant from the Greater National Regional Council to the Metro so Social Services Commission to provide meals uh, that meet the NDA uh, nutritional guidelines to eligible seniors as well. So this is 708 and 709. Um, do we have a, a motion? Move. And second. Uh, do we have any discussion? So uh, I'll briefly explain this is a, a it's very self-explanatory, but this is uh, uh, CARES Act dollars that we've received uh, to provide uh, meals for uh, seniors here in the city during the coronavirus. I will continue that. Uh, uh, we'll continue uh, providing uh, those services um, here in Metro uh, with these grants. Um, and I'll do a quick roll call vote. Do we have any other discussion? I see a nine. Uh, Council Member Hurt. Aye. Council Member Benedict. Aye. Council Member Glover. Aye. Council Member Hall. Aye. Council Member Porterfield. Aye. Council Member Pulley. Aye. Council Member Welsh. Aye. Council Member Hauser. Aye. And I vote as well in the affirmative. All right, uh, 708 and 709, nine in favor, zero against. Uh, bills on second reading, uh, BL 2025-53 by Hall and Toombs requires a resolution of the Metro Council 30 days prior to discontinuing operations at the Bordeaux Long-Term Care Facility, the J.B. Knowles Home Assisted Living Facility and Nashville General Hospital. Um, do we have a motion uh, well, we have a letter to approve and a proposed substitute by Council Member Toombs. Is Council Member Toombs available? I'm here, Chair. Council Member Toombs, would you like us to move your substitute? Yes, I would, Chair. I move the substitute. Thank you. We have a second? I second, second that. That's great. We've, it's been properly seconded and approved. Um, we will now move the... Uh, the proposed amendment. Do we have any a discussion before uh, we what? add the substitute? 
Chair, would you like me to explain what the substitute does? That'd be great. So the substitute, um, it, it takes uh, Bordeaux Hospital, which is already closed, it takes it out of the original uh, bill as well as uh, Nashville General Hospital, which has a, because it's a, a hospital, it has a lot more hoops to jump through than a long-term care facility. So uh, the substitute takes that out and focuses on uh, Bordeaux Knowles, uh, not Bordeaux Knowles, <laughs> Knowles Assisted Living Facility. Uh, and the current operator, the contract is actually up uh, June 30th of this year. Um, so it, it puts a timeline in place so that we don't end up in the same situation as we were uh, with Bordeaux Hospital. I am still working with the administration on the substitute so that it's a, a timeline that works for the current operator as well as the administration. Uh, I would ask that the committee, um, just as we did in budget yesterday, uh, that you approve the substitute and then defer the bill as amended to for one meeting. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Uh, I would like to go to Council Member Hall uh, as the lead sponsor of this bill. Uh, and, and I concur. Um, Council Member Toombs and I had a conversation about this um, a few weeks ago, right after the last meeting. She um, initiated the conversation about the, the substitute. And so we're just trying to get an accurate timeline um, for this next RFP process and then a plan in place. You'll see another legislation for uh, the entire site overall. Thank you, Councilman Brown. Uh, Councilman Benedict, I saw your hand. Uh, do, you, do you have a... My uh, Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to um, thank the the original sponsor as well as uh, Councilwoman Toombs for the work on this is getting out in front of this is so important based on what we just saw. So thank you for this work and I look forward to supporting um, this and uh, in committee here and the deferral and hopefully uh, getting some something uh, good finalized. So thank you for all that work. Good deal. Well, great. So we um, so we have to add the substitute on and then we'll have to defer. So. Uh, this, uh, so we're going to add the substitute in this roll call vote. Uh, Council Member Hurt. Aye. Council Member Benedict. Aye. Council Member Glover. Aye. Council Member Hall. Aye. Council Aye. Member, thank you, Council Member Hall. Council Member Porterfield. Aye. Council Member Pulley. Aye. Council Member Welsh. Aye. Council Aye. Member Hauser. Aye. Uh, and I vote as well in the affirmative. And so do I have a motion to for uh, a deferral, one meeting deferral for this? So uh, move. Second. Right. Second. Okay. All right. So this is uh, perfect. So we will have a, uh, it's been properly uh, say, uh, moved and properly seconded for a one meeting deferral on the substitute bill. Uh, and so we're voting on that uh, measure. Uh, Council Member Hurt. Aye. Council Member Benedict. Aye. Council Member Glover. Council Member Glover. Council Member Hall. Aye. Council Member Porterfield. Aye. Council Member Pulley. Aye. Council Member Welsh. Aye. Council Member Hauser. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Eight in favor, uh, zero against, uh, no abstentions. Uh, and we have uh, one more, um, uh, one more bill, uh, BL 202586 by Toons, Styles, and others, uh, men's ordinance uh, number 2014-688 to reverse the Metro Council's determination that the provision of long-term medical care is obsolete and unnecessary as a governmental function, directing that certain actions be taken regarding the preservation of the licensed beds at the Bordeaux Long-Term Care Facility and appraisals of the Bordeaux Long-Term Care and J.B. Knowles Home for the Age Facilities and requesting that certain of the long-term plan for the J.B. Knowles Home Facility. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and probably seconded. There is an amendment 
on this bill. Council Member Toombs, you have an amendment? Uh, yes, Chair, and along the same veins, uh, vein as the previous uh, bill, I'm going to ask that the committee approve the amend uh, the amendment and then defer the bill as amended uh, for one meeting. I continue to work with the administration on this, uh, on the timeline to make sure that there, there aren't any unintended consequences and that it works for uh, uh, the entities, uh, particularly knows assistant living, um, that the timeline works for them. The amendment adds, um, the 180 days for the long-term plan, it puts it after the RFP process or uh, one year after the effective date of this uh, this bill, whichever one comes first. Again, just wanting to stay on top of uh, the very valuable asset that we have in Bordeaux Hospital in the building and the campus, as well as the licensed beds, and then wanting to stay ahead of the, the nose assistant uh, care facility. Um, and, and what the future holds for that particular facility. So again, I'd ask that the committee approve the amendment and then defer the bill as amended for one meeting. Thank you, Council Member Hall. Thank you, Chair. Um, and, and yes, I, again, I, I completely appreciate and, and support Council Member um assistance on this site and in this location. Um, under the previous administration and this, a long-term plan for the entire site has been offered up. So those conversations are still going. And so we appreciate any time, energy, effort in coming up with a precise and concise um, path forward for um, this part of my community. So um, again, I, I thank her for assistance and um, I'd like to see this substitute approved and defer one meeting also. Thank you, Council Member Hall. Uh, do we have any additional discussion? I see. Yeah, no Councilman, Council Member oh. Chair, I just, I just want to thank uh, Council Member Hall and Council Member Toons for the work that they're doing on this because you know this has been a very fragile and delicate uh, matter, and and particularly one that is dear to my heart, and uh, and I've had some struggles. Uh, with it and and for them to step up and step in the way that they have uh, gives me uh, rest and and I really do appreciate okay, them so and the leadership that they provided in this matter. And with that, my vote is an yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So we're voting on the amendment. Um, do we have any additional uh, discussion? Uh, seeing none, Councilmember Hall, you have anything else? I have your hand, but. No, Chair, I'm, I'll let it down. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're voting on the amendment. Um, all in favor, I <laughs> say. Well, it's a roll call, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Council Member Hurt? Yes. Aye. Council Member Benedict? Aye. Council Member Glover? Aye. Council Member Hall? Aye. Council Member Porterfield? Aye. Council Member Pulley? Aye. Council Member Welsh? Aye. Council Member Hauser. Aye. And I vote uh, in favor as well for the amendment. Um, and now we're gonna move the bill as amended. So we have a uh, second. Second. Uh, okay. Thank you. The bill has been moved and properly second as amended uh, for a deferral, excuse me. So we wanna move this for one meeting deferral. Um, Council Member Hurt. Aye. Council Member Benedict. Aye. Council Member Glover. Aye. Council Member Hall. Aye. Council Member Porterfield. Aye. Council Member Pulley. Aye. Council Member Welsh. Aye. Council Member Hauser. Aye. And I vote uh, in the affirmative as well. Uh, thank you guys. That is the agenda. We have again uh, Dr. Uh, Gil Wright uh, to uh, briefly discuss. Uh, with us the vaccination roll call i know that i've been getting a few emails um from council members and constituents at questions and so i wanted to have just a, a brief overview of the uh, vaccination rollout on the record uh for our constituents to be able to see so uh dr wright uh, the floor is yours thank you chairman um so we started uh, vaccinating uh, just uh, about the week before Christmas. Uh, we've now vaccinated over about 
2,800 uh, first responders uh, in the community. Uh, that is in addition to the hospitals and everybody else that's uh, vaccinating uh, in the community also. Uh, we are in the process of getting ready to move uh, in the very near future to the category 1A2, which will be all other healthcare workers uh, away from the, the frontline hospital-based uh, staff that was mainly in the first group as well as our first responders. Uh, additionally, the state has laid out a process for uh, also at the same time immunizing uh, by age category, and that first age group is 75 and older. We're in the process of finalizing a plan that will allow us to also start to vaccinate that uh, contingency. Um, we're just, just finalizing it, wanting to make sure that we have uh, everything in place, including having uh, information in Spanish uh, for those that uh, that's their primary language. So uh, along with that, we've started to investigate a number of our marginal groups, uh, such as um, inmates in both our local jails and prisons that meet that age group criteria, uh, as well as uh, mental health, uh, the state mental health hospital uh, inmate or excuse me, patients that would be in that group. And then there are a couple of uh, long-term hospitals uh, in the community that we have some responsibility in, and we're also looking at those. We are partnering with a number of the, well, actually with all of the health systems in the community as we move forward. Our biggest challenge at this point is just having routine uh, known quantities of vaccine right, arriving on a regular cadence. Um, all of that said, that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, we will move from one stage to the next as quickly as we can. Uh, and we are uh, hoping that as some of the uh, logistical issues with vaccine production are improved, we'll be able to uh, increase our ability to, to get vaccine into arms and move forward in the, the community. Thank you, Dr. Wright. Um, committee members, do you guys have any questions for Dr. Wright? Um, all right. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Dr. Wright, for joining us and especially for sharing this information. Um, I think the questions that I'm seeing mainly in the community are um, some folks are able to get vaccines even though they're not in the order that you just described. Now, I don't know and I haven't received any confirmation if that's a private facilities or, you know, what that may be. But could you please help clarify um, that the, 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 the stages as far as who will receive it? And are there any exceptions? Um, and is everybody in Davidson County, County following those rules or should they be? And what can we do to help get that message? Obviously, you being here helps us with that message. But any type of um, clarification about that information would be helpful. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman. Uh, we would, uh, obviously, I don't know of directly of any of those cases, but the state has been very adamant that we need to stay within our lane. However, the one exception is if you have vaccine that is about to, to go out of time frame uh, where it's still good, we want to put it in arms. So, uh, I will say that when we did our first responders, uh, we worked in conjunction with HCA, uh, and there was one evening where we had two doses at 10 o'clock at night that were going to be go bad. Uh, we actually, one of the staff went over and found two people, because we'd already given all the HCA people, but they went over to Subway, to a Subway store, and actually grabbed those two people, because and they thought they'd hit the lottery which they kind of did, but we didn't want it to expire and not give it to somebody. So we are very conscious of that, and we try to keep a running uh, list of people that are able to come in quickly if possible, you know, if we have available uh, over overage. But we're being very careful and not trying to thaw out more than we can give. So we are doing everything by appointment. We did see uh, some issues in some of the other counties with long lines and all of that. 
Uh, and in order to help with that, we will be doing pretty much everything by appointment. Uh, the hospital systems received their own vaccine and they made a determination who are as to who are their frontline staff. And after they got through those, uh, they did they have started to move into the the one eight two group, which is other healthcare workers that are not uh, directly in the ER and on the floor taking care of patients. These would be uh, clinic based uh, individuals. They they may have done that. I'm not aware of it. Uh, I have heard some reports. Now, the other thing that's happening is, unfortunately, the state, we're not going to move it exactly lockstep across the state. A lot of our smaller counties uh, do not have, obviously, the same concentration of 1A and 1, 1A1 and 1A2 individuals. We're a healthcare hub, and so we're going to have a higher percentage of those two groups here in Nashville. So it will take us a little longer to move through those than some of the surrounding counties. The other thing that is plays a part in where we're at in the process is how much of the population that we're offering the vaccine to actually decides to accept it. If I have a very low percentage that decide to accept it, I'm gonna move through that very quickly and I'm gonna move on to the next stage. And as we know in some of the outlying areas, uh, they're not very, they're not very uh, or they're not as apt to want to get vaccinated. So they have moved more quickly in some cases. We continue to work closely with the state. Uh, the state wants us to move as best we can kind of together. Uh, we do know that there have been some of our individuals going out to other counties to get vaccinated and vice versa. Uh, when the hospitals did their vaccinations. They vaccinated about, uh, I think it was close to 6,700 individuals from outlying counties uh, because they worked at a hospital here in, in Davidson County. And obviously, we don't want to provide a vector for that, for that virus into our hospitals. And, and that was very appropriate that they do that because that vaccine was received for their hospital staff. So uh, hopefully that answers your questions uh, for now. Thank you. Thank hopefully you. we continue to hear this anecdotally then. Um, and, and also you've given some good reasons why people may have misunderstood what they've heard. And I know there is a, um, as just as information is coming at you very quickly, it's coming at all of us very quickly. So again, thank you for your efforts, especially in your interim director role you've stepped in. And uh, we really appreciate the good work you're doing. Thank you. Councilmember, Councilmember Hurt, um, I see your hand is up for a question for Dr. Wright. Councilmember Hurt, we have the floor. Yes, uh, thank you. I've been trying to go between rules and, and health and hospitals. Uh, my question is, is that, um, is there any um, specific um, communities of color that's being um, um, sought out in your efforts, considering that um, the largest number of fatalities uh, from COVID-19 comes from people with color. Has there been a designated uh, a location or effort to target or to reach out to that community specifically to make sure that they are receiving vaccinations? Uh, because we do know that the data speaks to, to the fact that they are the ones who, uh, are the, 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 that the virus is more fatal with that community of uh, people. Right. Thank you uh, for that question, council member. Uh, yes, we're very aware of that. We are actually working uh, right now with Meharry. Uh, we are providing them because they're not a, Meharry itself is not a hospital system, but a number of their individuals are in the 1A2 category. So we are, we've uh, already arranged that, and part of our vaccine, vaccine that we just received, will be going to them and they'll be doing their own vaccination clinic. Uh, and they are, um, have partnered with us, been a great partner with us running the assessment centers, uh, reaching out to a number of the churches and, and other community organizations for uh, people of color. We will uh, 
continue to work with them and, and already have uh, started to look at how we, how we can partner with them to work in that community. Uh, as we do want to uh, be sure that we're reaching all of the different uh, minorities and, and, and subpopulations within our community. And, and we're trying to be very conscious about how we do that. And any so, suggestions you have would be great. So you're basically saying that you've already outlined a uh, uh, process to address certain people, uh, 75 and older, it would seem to me that you would have also um, put this uh, a, a, a similar process in place for people of color, being that they are the ones that are uh, right. We're working on, right. from the virus. We're working on all of those vulnerable populations. We are restrained to some degree within the state's guidelines on which groups we can work with in which order. But definitely, as we get into a group, we want to make sure that we outreach to all of those. The state, and back to um, Council Persons uh, Benedict's question or, or comments earlier, uh, the state actually did in one case, I believe, kind of threaten one hospital that was not wanting to or was thinking about providing their own orders. So they were talking about potentially pulling some vaccine. They didn't ultimately have to, but they are very conscious of how they laid their plan out and the state plan had more than 30 different organizations across the state that were involved and provided ec and, and really specifically looked at equity and we uh and and so we are using that but we do continue to look at any vulnerable population that can't come to us we're going to go to them uh we're already working right now in the 1a1 uh, because of the uh, individuals that are uh, adults uh, that have a mental uh, disability, uh, those group homes, we're going out and doing them. And we will continue. As I mentioned, uh, we've already looked at what's what's in our, our jails and our prisons that we need to go to because that's a marginalized group. We're going to continue to work uh, closely with Meharry and with other community leaders to get to those populations. Okay, and in, in, in what you're doing, I hope you remember the community of people with HIV and uh, AIDS because they also are vulnerable and have compromised immune systems. Very much so. Very much so. Councilman Hurt, is that all? You have any additional questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, Councilmember Hauser, and then Councilmember Hall, and then Councilmember Druff will come. Councilmember Yes, and, and my question is similar. It is how we are communicating with the public that they can get shots. You know, when, when we're working with the various institutions, it's pretty easy to communicate because you're going to a hospital or long-term care or whatever. Um, but once you get beyond that, and you're talking about general population, such as the 75 up, et cetera, how are we communicating so that Joe Blow down the street knows, oh, this is my week, I'm eligible, and these are the places I can go to have this administered. How is that going to be communicated? Sure. Uh, good question. Uh, we are placing on our on the Metro website for COVID uh, what category we're currently in. Uh, we are updating on a weekly basis at the mayor's press conference as to what category we're in and uh, we'll announce when we open new groups or new phases. Uh, we also are doing press releases and uh, for for whatever reason, uh, I've heard from my colleagues across the state, uh, those 75 and older uh, seem to know very well when they're when they're uh, open and they have not had a problem getting them. It's in some ways almost been the opposite in, in not getting too many all at once. And uh, uh, we don't want to get in the situation where we have a number of people come and we don't have vaccine for them. So we're being very conscientious about that. Uh, so we, again, uh, we're working through a number. Of, we're also working with mayor's office to be sure on messaging. The state's doing messaging, uh, but I am, I'm, Anybody that has any ideas or suggestions, uh, please feel free to email me as uh, 
Uh, I do not believe that I, I have all the answers and any help that I can get is always appreciated. Thank you, uh, Council Member Hall. Thank you, Chair. Um, and, and Doctor, I, I really, really appreciate all the work that you're putting in. I know you're moving and catching this on the fly. And so I just want to take a minute to recognize you and thank you for your efforts and getting caught up to speed. Um, but that being said, I also would love to be able to coordinate with you and the state, being that I have the highest fatality rate, that I have a black and rural white population that is lacking um, health care access, and I have the highest median age. And so I'm your trifecta. I am exactly what you guys should be targeting. Um, a community of rural um, whites, blacks with the highest fatality rate, highest median age. And so um, I think because that and the fact that we also have a relationship with Meharry, who has been running our adult day center and clinic over at, um, in Bordeaux, that um, Dr. Hildreth would be able to hit the ground running, he and Dr. Collins and others. And um, we have more than adequate sites where we could set up and do whatever we need to do for um, the people from that location. So I'd love to be able to coordinate with you on those efforts and Dr. Hildreth. Thank you. I appreciate any, you know, where we can leverage uh, the community, uh, medical community to help get out to uh, these populations uh, that is great, and we will uh, continue to, to work towards that. But I appreciate that offer. Thank you. Councilmember Druffel, uh, I'd like to recognize you. Uh, thanks, Chair, and, and uh, I apologize, uh, Tom. Thanks so much for all you do. Uh, let me echo everybody else's thanks. Uh, question, and, and of course, every, all of us are getting hit with uh, questions. Is there a, a place or opportunity? We, we see the level of priority of who gets it. Is there a place that we that you might be able to establish when the vaccines occur, how you're going to roll it out, when, you know, in, in, in what format, so that um, we're ready to communicate that, or we have communicated that uh, at the right time. Um, we know once it comes in, it, you're going to probably make sure it happens very quickly. But as we're able to, to communicate that, um, and we, we already talked about line of communication, but also um, where and how we're going to get those vaccines, uh, there might be a value of, of learning that earlier than later. And then you have 40 of us willing to help you in any way. Thank you. Right. So uh, right now, unfortunately, a lot of times I don't know I'm getting vaccine until several days ahead. Uh, I think as our supply chain becomes more, more robust, we get a better supply, I think we'll know further out. Um, but uh, we are planning to, part of my plan is, is when we do our weekly press conferences is also to make sure that we're communicating with you, the council, and get information out about where we're at, uh, and I'd like to, you know, hopefully we can get it out Wednesday night or, or Thursday morning as we're going into the, or before we go into the press conference so that you do know you're not surprised. I know you're getting a lot of questions from your constituents. Uh, I am getting a lot of questions here, and, and everybody up the line gets a lot of questions, and, and uh, wherever we can make it so that people understand better, uh, it reduces the call volume and lets us do more of what we need to be doing, which is putting shots in arms. So uh, I appreciate that. And, and you might have answered this already. Do we have any indication at all from the state when we would get our next, and, and you, or do you know that yet? Uh, they're, they're talking that we should be getting weekly shipments. Uh, next week's shipment should be uh, actually coming to the hospital systems, and that will be their second dose to completely immunize those people that have already gotten their first dose. The following week, we should be getting our doses to finish our first responders. So uh, that that those are already set back and reserved and available. So I know that we, sh we will be getting those. Uh, and by then, hopefully, you know, when, when this suddenly got rushed out, um, as you can imagine, there's a lot of logistical 
issues and, and getting everything going correctly and stuff, but seems to be smoothing out. And uh, yes, I, I think we're going to be receiving regular shipments. It's just slowly, they will increase the amount that we're getting as they're able to increase their production. So, so in, in one of my, uh, a fair amount of my constituents are in the 75 plus. So uh, would you say that we're looking at two to three weeks possibly for that group? Uh, we're probably going, we're, we're, we're going to get to them very quickly. Uh, we will have limited supply for them uh, initially because we do need to be also doing our healthcare providers. But I do want to start because we know that our 75 plus, uh, just like our some of our minority communities have a higher risk burden. Uh, if they get sick, they are more likely to end up in the hospital, more likely to die. One of the things about ending up in the hospital is we have a, a fairly tight hospital system right now because of the strain that they have. So we want to move for that uh, as quickly as we can. At the same time, we also have to be moving through that group that's going to be treating them, at least in the office. And okay. then after that, the next group after that will be our school teachers and our daycares. And uh, okay. obviously that helps us become more normal if we can get through that group. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wright. So, uh, Dr. Wright, I, I do have a question uh, for you. Um, one, could you, could you all send a report to me, uh, just a weekly update in regards to the vaccination rollout and plan, um, so I could share that with this committee and other members of the council. Yes, we should be able to have have a, uh, that done. I'll work with Tom on that. And just a few follow-up questions. Um, I think Council Member Hart uh, made some points in regards to uh, communities of color. Uh, is <clears throat> you know in, in some of those communities that I know you may have mentioned that individuals may not be able to get to you, um, so you would come to them. Is there a plan that we could put in place or work with you or your team could work with us uh, to to have that on paper of where they're going to go? Um, and, and I know this is a moving target, but possible timelines or dates that we could have in those communities to to serve them. So, um, and as well as older individuals as well too, sure. may not, may not right. have uh, services to, so, to get so, right. So the first thing is, is as much as we can, we're going to try and have centralized vaccination sites. The reason being is we can put a lot more vaccinate vaccine in arms. If we've got a central place where we don't have to set up and tear down every day and all those other things. But as we identify pockets where they aren't able to get to us, then we will do do uh, community outreach. But at this point, uh, I'm not even I'm not even able to say what I'm getting for vaccines. So I'm very reluctant to put into uh, any anything in the, on the paper specifically about timeline uh, until I have a better idea of the supply, because uh, we'll get just as many more calls about why aren't we there yet uh, as we are. But we can look to that uh, also, and I and and we're really in the early phases of talking through how our health systems can help us do that. Um, we just had uh, a discussion uh, over the weekend with Meharry to to really look at now that we we are starting to get vaccine to do that, but we we also need to get through that first phase and that's the equity you know and but we recognize the equity in the other so it's a balancing act and it changes daily thank you dr dr hurt i mean uh council member hurt uh, thank you very much um you know it, it really concerns me dr wright because i just received an update from one of my colleagues at neighborhood health and he has indicated that the state's plan has already rolled out in Wilson County. And it is vaccinations for patients age 75 uh, and, and those who um, um, cannot, the, those that have problems with transportation. And then they have uh, those patients who will be vaccinated by neighborhood health and those in public housing. 
So I, I don't really see a real push or urge uh, going towards those communities of color. I understand the public housing does have residents that are particularly um, people of color. But as Councilmember Hall said, that he has the highest fatality, 37218. And it just seems to me that they would have focused on that first and foremost, because that's where you have the greatest number of fatalities. Is it something that we can do as council members to assist you to advocate for pushing this towards those communities that need it the most? What can we do to help you? Because it seems to me with what it is that I'm seeing in this outline that there seems to be more um, urgency and efforts pushed towards other uh, counties and Davidson County is not the priority. Yes, uh, Council Member Hurt, uh, I, I, I guess the best is to, if you want to help us uh, talk to, you could talk to the state, they're the ones that that's plan we're following. But uh, the other thing, as I said earlier, is, is it really depends on we're we're in the top 10, 10 counties as far as the overall number of vaccinate uh, percentage of our community that is vaccinated at this point. So we are getting some vaccine. Most of that's because of our hospitals and we need we need help getting vaccine and continuing to do that going forward. Uh, because we do have a much higher density, po you know, population, uh, and I, I know that they are moving to, to Wilson County shortly. Um, I'm just, we will be making an announcement Thursday, but I, I, that's uh, about the that age group uh, and moving forward with it. But that uh, we haven't announced that to the general public yet. And and any thoughts we'll, you have? We'll, yeah. we'll receive that information prior to the announcement, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Today or Wednesday, tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. You should get it tomorrow, so we can let you know. I just it's not for the public uh, in general yet. Okay. Well, we're not the public, Dr. Wright, but uh, we, <laughs> so we love we love to get that no, as soon as possible. So we can so we can prepare for any questions uh, because sure. the people uh, the people that we serve uh, in Nashville uh, generally come to uh, this group uh, this body first with any other questions so we want to be able to and, and answer I, those. I, yeah. I, uh, just don't know who's watching otherwise. Perfect, Councilmember Hall. Um, thank you, Chair. Really briefly, and then this is just a follow up um, and a request. Um, follow up to Council Member Hurt's um, recent statements, and uh, again, we just want to reiterate that you know, there, while we can do what we can do at the local level, um, whatever we can do to assist you guys in coordinating with the state, um, I would like to ask both you know, Council Member Hurt and the Minority Caucus, as the Minority Caucus Chair, and then um, Chair Taylor here for Health and Hospitals if they would consider doing letters to you and to the state that you could pass along um, and that we would put our suggestions in writing and through this committee pass those along to you as well, but that we be included in some capacity in um, the, the briefings because again, you know, to council members Hertz um, point, you know, we are a highly, we're going to be a community uh, or a city that gets vaccinated. That's true. But again, it's kind of hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel or the real direction when you have, um, for us, what would be just something practical uh, or obvious that you start with those communities that are most impacted. And so um, groups like 50 Ford and, and Meharry and, and Tennessee State University and, and different organizations that have a footprint in the minority community or in communities of color in general, um, coordinating with them to make sure we have boots on the ground to assist you guys in any way. But starting with, you know, areas that have, that are disproportionately impacted. We, you know, we're talking about a city of seniors and a, communities of seniors and baby boomers who average two chronic illnesses per household and 
who are far more disproportionately impacted, and it's bearing out in the infection rate and in the fatality rate. And so whatever we have to do to, to make sure that we move to the top of that list, um, not trying to skip anybody else or, or anybody, you know, leave anyone out, but um, the state is operating from 5,000 feet and may not be cognizant of or conscious of um, what's really happening here in Davidson County on the ground. And so we want to make sure we get that information in front of them and then give you all the tools that you need to uh, be successful in administering those. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And uh, Councilman Drebel, I, I will recognize you. Uh, thanks, Chair. Just a, a, a follow up again uh, from Councilor Hertz and, and sort of brought up a question. Since um, a lot of our first uh, responders and, and medical personnel are from other counties, um, are, is there any reconciliation um, of looking at those since they can get the vaccine in those counties and it seems to have a little bit more access than we do? Is there any reconciliation trying to figure out uh, of, of, you know, again, getting the first liners in those counties uh, that would give us a little bit more extra here in, in Davidson County? Just a question. I think the state is aware of that. And on a call today with the state, they were being very cognizant of where every county's at and trying to to work to make sure that they, uh, as best they can, uh, move as closely as possible through the stages as a, as a state. So I think there is, there is that possibility that they will uh, try and be cognizant of that going forward. So uh, hopefully, uh, that means, you know, they will preferentially uh, maybe give us an extra vaccine if we're getting behind uh, compared to where everybody else is stepwise. Okay, thank you. Dr. Wright, thank you so much. Do we have anyone else in the queue that uh, has a question in regards to Davidson County's vaccine rollout plan? Seeing none, Dr. Wright, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we'll, I'll be in touch with you uh, first thing in the morning, probably, uh, but I'll follow up with you. Um, and council members, if you have any questions that hit you uh, throughout this time, um, of course, uh, you can ask uh, Dr. Wright directly, or if you want me to add that into my briefing with him, um, please send it to uh, uh, to Rosie and, um, and I'll get it uh, and I'll ask him as well. Um, so I'll adjourn this meeting without any objections. All right, thank you. See you guys in the next room. Thank you, Chair.